Hey, I'm Alec, and on today's Digital Fabrication Anatomy, I'm going to talk about filament ovality. When I first started 3D printing, there wasn't much concern about the diameter of filaments by a manufacturer or consumer alike. One spool could have 0.1 millimeters bigger diameter than it should, or it could have 0.1 millimeters smaller, even on the same spool. And now while that doesn't sound like a lot, that does play a fairly large role in how your prints will actually turn out. Even if you try to measure the filament with some calipers and get an average of the diameter across the spool, that inconsistent back and forth of filament size is going to give you some over extruding here and some under extruding there, and it can get confused for Z banding and other different troubleshooting inconsistencies. So having a filament that is perfectly round is the ideal situation. Now today, you'd be hard pressed to find a filament that isn't tolerance to at least 0.05 millimeters, plus or minus the diameter of the filament. But what's not often talked about is ovality. So let's talk. First, let me define what ovality is. It's exactly what it sounds like. It refers to how oval is the actual filament. The less oval it is, the more it approaches being a circle and perfectly round. Now detecting ovality requires a little insight into how filament diameter is measured in the first place. Filament diameter is measured using a laser micrometer, and a one-axis laser micrometer will have the transmitter below the filament and the receiver above it. Now, I have a whiteboard in front of me, so I'm going to do some diagramming on here to give you a better understanding of how it actually works. So let's say at the bottom you have the transmitter, and above it you have the receiver. As the filament passes through it, the laser gets blocked and some of it passes through and it can tell that this is 1.75 millimeters. Now if this filament diameter starts getting too far this way or it starts blocking this laser and it detects that it's 1.8 then alarm will go off saying filament is out of spec and you need to double check on the filament coming out of it. It'll do the same if the filament comes out as 1.6 or instead it's letting too much light pass through it and it'll do the same thing. It'll alarm out and then you'll be able to say that, okay, if there's something wrong with this filament, you need to double check on it. In some cases to correct this, what they can do is they can speed up the motor that's winding up the filament so that if it's at 1.8, they just spin it faster and that stretches it out. And if it's coming out at 1.6, then they'll slow it down so that it has more time to just stay together as one larger piece. It's basically how they make different size filaments, is just how fast are they pulling the filament out of the extruder system. There's a problem here though. The laser can't see everything here. So if the filament is exactly 1.75 millimeters in diameter, but it's super thick, this would still pass the test. This is still 175, it blocks the same amount of light, but it's a lot thicker. Your filament is gonna be coming out in the entirely wrong shape but to this laser's eye, this filament's fine. Now this doesn't mean the entire methodology is flawed. All that we have to do now is let's try and make it a two axis laser micrometer and see what that does. So to make the system a little more accurate, let's put another transmitter over here. Mark that T, mark this R, put another receiver over here. Now, we have filament in the center here and light from this way and light from this way. This gets us a much more accurate representation of the filament, but again, you still have the problem of not being able to see everything. You're at least adding another dimension. You have depth and width instead of just width of the filament, but there's still dead zones where to the transmitters and the receiver's eye, it's okay, it's within spec, but in actuality has some differences. So in the best case scenario, you're gonna have a piece of filament that is 1.75 millimeters in width and 1.75 millimeters in depth. What that also means is that the transmitters and the receivers are gonna make a perfect box around it that's 1.75 millimeters. And you can see that there's some dead zones in the corners here where it's not seeing the true shape of the filament, it can only see the area around it. 
And that also means is that this diagonal distance is 2.41 millimeters. And the area of this square is 27% more than the actual diameter of the filament should be. A 1.75 millimeter in diameter circle is 27% smaller than what this theoretically could create in its best case scenario. So there is some trouble there in getting your filament to look exactly as you intend it to. Of course, just like the step up from the one axis laser micrometer was a two, now you have a three axis. And so your worst case scenario looks more like a hexagon instead of a square. This is the same setup that we use for our Pro Series line of filaments where we have three axis lasers actually measuring the filament diameter. So readjusting for a three axis laser, let's put a transmitter and a receiver. So in this scenario, we have three different transmitters, three different receivers, the filaments in the center, and the actual cross section that this creates. So that comes that way, this one comes this way, and this transmitter comes that way. You can see the loose hexagon that's in the center there. And this has a much smaller dead zone around each of these. Now with this three axis laser micrometer, the cross-sectional area is 2.65 millimeters, which is actually only 9% over extrusion from a 1.75 millimeter filament diameter. So this distance here is 1.75, but from tip to tip of the hexagons, that's 2.01 millimeters, which is a lot better than the 2.47 we were getting with a two-axis laser micrometer. So every axis you add to your laser micrometer system, you get closer and closer to having a circle. If you add a four axis laser system, you'd get closer to an octagon, which would be a, even more precise than 2.01. And you could have a five axis, which will get you a decagon. And you can just keep going until you have a perfect circle, but there becomes a point where it's just diminishing returns and you can get filament to be pretty round with a three axis laser. The other important comparison is how often we're sampling the data spit out by the micrometer, because it does that at an almost constant rate, like a thousand times per second, which makes it pretty difficult for a person to interpret that and do something useful with it. So instead what we do is we take a time span and we look at that and see what the average value of the diameter was in that time. So if you look at something over five seconds, it has more time to cool off and get to a pretty good average. But if you're looking at something at a really small window, it has to be perfect most of the time. Let me paint you a picture of how having different sampling times makes a big impact on the actual measured diameter. So with this graph, we have here time at the bottom in seconds, and we have diameter in millimeters on the left, with this line representing 1.75. Let's say that the filament that's being created comes out and is just ridiculously over extruded and then gets ridiculously under extruded and is back. If we took the average of these peaks, we'd find that it's exactly 1.75 millimeters. Even though if we tried printing with this, there's a huge bubble of 2.0 millimeter diameter filament and a huge drop to 1.5 millimeter filament. You could see this on the filament, but to the sampling, it falls perfectly in line here with an average. If we bumped it down to being a one second sampling, well then we'd see here that the average filament is way over 175. And in this sampling, the average is way below 175. So the more precise you get, you can see that the filament just gets worse every time you break it down. So while it does make it a lot more difficult to get filament that's exact, it also means that your filament is much closer to actually having the right tolerances. There's a number of things that you need to compare when you're actually checking and comparing different filaments. Not just filament diameter and the tolerancing there, but the ovality of it and the sampling data for that actual ovality testing. Because if it's just looking at one of those values, the others could be significantly off where your parts are gonna come out just a little bit weird. They're not gonna be terrible, but there's gonna be some element of imprecision in it. It's important to understand what these different tolerances mean so that you can adequately compare apples to apples instead of apples to oranges.
And I hope this video has given you some insight into how your favorite filament manufacturers actually create filament and all the thought and machines that go into making sure that it comes out just right. Stay tuned for more digital fabrication anatomy. I'm Alex from Matter Hackers. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. If you like that, give us a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to stay up to date with all the big builds, how to's and troubleshooting guides I'll be working on. And don't forget, check out matterhackers.com to explore everything 3D printing and to join the community.